Over the last six years, I have hiked the first 300 miles of the Colorado Trail. I'm about to head out on my last hike to finish the trail, a 180 mile trek through the San Juan Mountains. Over the past six years, I think I have really nailed down what gear to carry. So what am I bringing this year? Stay tuned and find out. My gear over the last six years has really been fine-tuned. It's gotten smaller and smaller and lighter and lighter. This year, my base weight is about 11 or 12 pounds and my overall weight is about 21 pounds. And before I get into what is in my new pack here, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I will be wearing and some other things that I will be carrying. We're gonna start out here with my shoes. Again, I'm gonna be wearing the Brooks Cascadia. These are the 16s. I've had about four or five uh, pairs of these shoes and they are really comfortable for me. Uh, I'm going to be wearing merino wool sock liners. These are from Njinji and they are toe socks. And I just love them. Probably my favorite piece of new gear in 2022. Over the top, I will have some ankle darn tough socks, wool socks, some Patagonia running shorts with built-in liner. On top, I'm gonna to be wearing a smart wool shirt. This is a shirt that I customized. I wore this shirt last year. I wanted to wear this shirt. It was a long sleeve hooded, lightweight merino wool shirt. I took the sleeves off. The sleeves were too hot, but I still have that hood. And the hood is important for sun protection. Uh, I do wear this uh, Under Armour hat, but on the back of my ears, the back of my neck, that hood provides the sun protection. It's a little chilly in the morning. I'm gonna be starting my hike wearing uh, this Melanzana microgrid fleece hoodie. These are only available in Leadville, Colorado. My hiking poles. I've been using these hiking poles for probably 10 years. They are the Cascadia Mountain Tech. They are carbon fiber, so they are uh, pretty lightweight. They are cheap, you can find them on Amazon. All of my gear that I'm talking about here are linked down in the description below. And before I start talking a little bit about what is in my fanny pack, I wanna share with you my spreadsheet for planning the hike. So it's 180 miles, and you can see here on my chart that uh, I've charted out an approximate of where I'm starting each day, where I'm ending each day, both by landmarks and by mile markers. And to the right of that, I have it kind of marked in a color code of how hard that day's hike is gonna be from green, yellow, and red. You can see on here that on the far right, I have my meals planned out and that I will be carrying three days worth of food uh, to start and then resupplying in Lake City and Lake uh, resupplying in uh, Silverton. And the information of where we are gonna be staying overnight in both of those resupply towns is on my spreadsheet along with a phone number. So if we don't make it to when our reservations are, um, hopefully we can call and change those reservations. And both of those hotels will be accepting uh, our resupply boxes that we will be shipping via UPS. <clears throat> Back to my fanny pack. Yeah, I'm a fanny pack guy. I love fanny packs because they're a little bit bigger than the side pockets that come on backpacks. And the one that I am carrying that I have had for a few years here is from Light AF, and this is the XL version. This is a Dyneema fanny pack. I'm actually upgrading from this fanny pack. Uh, I just don't have it yet. It's the exact same fanny pack, but it's made out of an Ultra 200 material. You're gonna hear me talking a lot about Ultra uh, 200. My backpack here is also made out of Ultra material. It's just like Dyneema where it's lightweight, it's waterproof. However, I think it's a little bit more durable and 
it is uh, a little more cloth-like and a little less plasticky. So the reason why I like this fanny pack is mainly because of this mesh pocket on the front. It fits my iPhone in there perfectly. And when I shoot all of my video on my iPhone, uh, if an animal pops out or if I see something, I can whip my camera out really quick and I'm gonna be using the far out guide for navigation. So I'm gonna be looking at my phone often. It's easy to pull out. If we unzip the fanny pack inside of here, I have Midwest Backpacker stickers. If you see me out on the trail, hopefully I have some stickers and I will give you one. Please say hi, don't be shy. Uh, I have an UltraPod. Uh, this is a backup tripod for shooting video. Bag of trail mix, all of my snacks I keep in here. Uh, some Swedish fish. Uh, these are some, they're called salt sticks. Uh, they're actually kind of taste like a sweet tart, but they provide uh, some of the electrolytes that I need when I'm sweating a lot along with my water. So that is everything inside the main compartment on the fanny pack. However, the fanny pack also has a little pocket on the back where I keep uh, a wet wipe in case I need to go to the bathroom quickly. And that's where I keep my wallet. Let's talk about what is on the outside of my pack. So my pack here, like I mentioned, is made out of an ultra material. It is from Waymark Gear Company and it is the Evolve Backpack. It is the 38 liter. It also comes in a 35 liter. But this is the 38 liter Evolve made out of Ultra. It's new. Uh, I've taken it out on one other hike. Now this is a frameless pack. I am new to frameless packs, but if you wanna go ultra lightweight, that is the way to go. You can see on the top of my backpack is my trademark Doritos. Not just a snack. I'll get into how I'm gonna use my Doritos when I talk about my food. Uh, let's let's go to the the uh, shoulder straps. On my shoulder straps, I have the uh, Garmin Inreach Mini. Uh, I don't use it for navigation. I use it so my wife can track where I am on the trail, keeps her from uh, worrying, as well as it has an SOS button on there, and I can communicate uh, via Bluetooth on my cell phone when I don't have cell phone signal. So I can text my wife even if I don't have cell phone signal. Uh, I have a tripod holster here made by my friend Miyagi. Works really well. I, inside of it, I have my tripod that I can pull out for shooting my video. It gets to be about three or four feet tall. It weighs about a pound. Another shoulder strap. I have a 750 milliliter uh, bottle of water, a smart water bottle. Um, and on my sternum strap here, let me pull it off. I have the Knox Gear 39G Bluetooth speaker. Now relax. I know you don't want to hear other people's music. This is a super small Bluetooth. I keep it right here. It's not very loud. If I see other people, it has a button on there where I stop it. So nobody hears my music, my podcast other than me. And I need that stimulation when I'm walking for 12 days on the trail, most of the time on my own, uh, just to keep s something in my brain, you know, and not thinking about it, that my feet hurt or how far I have to go. I'm thinking about music or, and I am entertained. Okay, on the one side pocket, I have a second bottle, uh, 750 milliliter smart water bottle. So I will be carrying 1.5 liters of water. On the other side pocket, <clears throat> I have a uh, stove. And on this trip, I am carrying a canister stove. I usually carry an alcohol stove. However, uh, there's a fire ban on the Colorado Trail almost every year. So I am using a canister stove. I have a 500 milliliter titanium pot here. Inside of it, I have matches and a lighter and I have a uh, 110 gram fuel canister here nestled in. This fuel canister, they say, lasts for 10 or 12 boils. Um, I'm gonna be up at higher elevations, so it probably won't last that long. 
uh, this will get me through uh, my resupply in Silverton. So I need six boils out of this canister before I resupply. In Silverton, I have reserved another canister at the outdoor store there that will be sitting there waiting for me and I know it will be in stock. Okay, in my front pocket uh, that's made out of Lycra, I have uh, my water bag for filtering water, my Sawyer squeeze for filtering the water, uh, some glasses that I have to use when I look at my phone in my hammock uh, at night when there's poor lighting, uh, as well as I have the data book for the Colorado Trail. I mostly navigate by using the Far Out app. It's just nice to get a little different uh, perspective when you're uh, laying in your tent at night uh, to see where you're at, look at the next day, just something different than looking at your phone. I have a microgrid fast drying uh, washcloth here for either wiping my face down or wiping my tent off. I keep my tent stakes on the outside. Uh, these are the MSR Groundhog Minis. Just nice to keep those pokey things outside of the backpack. On the far bottom, I have my raincoat. It is from Enlightened Equipment. It is the Visp. It is very light and also very expensive. And that is everything on the outside of my backpack. Uh, if I roll out the roll top of the Evolve, the first thing on the top of my backpack is my tent. This is the duplex from z -Packs. Very expensive, very lightweight. Um, I don't use it often, but it is a very nice tent. And since it is very light, that's why I'm keeping it on the top of my backpack. I have four layers in this backpack. This is the lightest thing that goes on top. You want to keep the heavy things next to you, and next to your body, and not up here. So the next thing is probably the heaviest thing in my backpack, and it's right against my pack. It is my food bag. It is a custom printed food bag from Hilltop Packs. It's made out of Dyneema. It's super sweet. And here is what is inside. Here is everything that is inside of my food bag. I have two one gallon Ziploc bags, one to put my Doritos in once they're open, one as a garbage bag. And then I have a long handled spork, my bear line. And with my bear line, I have this titanium pole here. And this little rod I use when I hang PCT style, instead of tying a knot around a stick, I can do it on here without tying a knot. A little knife toothbrush and toothpaste. Here are my meals uh, for breakfast every day. I have these uh, Hostess Strudel cinnamon coffee cake things. I have two of them for breakfast every morning. Uh, a lot of calories and they're delicious. Uh, for lunch, as I mentioned, I have three meals here and these Doritos will last for three lunches and there's probably a little left over that I have as a snack with my dinners. And along with the Doritos for lunch, I have some Sims beef sticks from Aldi. 12 sticks in the package, four sticks for each of the three meals. For dinner, I have peak refuels. I have a variety here for the first three. Uh, beef stroganoff, homestyle chicken and rice, uh, chili with beef. And then for dessert, got to have something to look forward to every day. I have three different king size candy bars, anything from Reese's to Snickers to Twix. Gotta have a variety, used to always eat Snickers. Almost killed me. I exaggerate. Uh, for snacks over here, I have a split peanut butter and jelly. I have some oatmeal pies and some chocolate rice crispy treat snacks. So again, this is just for three days and I have resupplies uh, coming for uh, the middle section coming to Lake City and for the end section coming to Silverton. Uh, they're being shipped via UPS uh, to the hotels that we are staying to uh, in in both of those towns. So that is all of my food.
Let's keep moving down to the third layer. Now the third layer has a bunch of smaller bags that I put in that one layer. The first bag is all of my extra clothes. You can see I don't bring a whole lot of extra clothes because I usually end up just wearing the same clothes the whole time. In here I have some polyester uh, long underwear. I will mainly just wear this uh, when I sleep at night if it's going to be cool. It's nice to take off those shorts, put on something clean. Uh, if it's cold I wear these. I should also mention that all of my clothes is treated with permethrin. And permethrin not only repels ticks, but it helps re, uh, repel mosquitoes as well. I also have a pair of uh, just short underwear. So if it's warm out when I'm sleeping and I don't want to wear these, I wear these to bed. Just again, you want to take those shorts off, maybe even wash them in a creek, get all that salt and that sand and that grit off. It'll prevent chafing. I have a um, smart wool t-shirt. Just a second one. It's nice to put that on. If the other one again is all salty or all wet, to wear something clean um, to bed at night. The final things in here, I have another pair of darn tough socks. Uh, these are a little bit bigger. Um, I usually will probably just wear those other ones the whole time. And I save these in case I want to wear some clean, dry socks when I go to bed at night. Final thing here is a pair of super small, super lightweight gloves. I expect up at altitude in the mornings, it'll probably be right around freezing. And I have a problem uh, when it's cold out that um, I have nerve damage in my fingers from getting frostbite a couple times in the past. So anytime my fingers get cold, they get numb. So not only to keep my fingers warm, but to hopefully keep them from getting numb, which is kind of a pain you know, stuffing things away when you can't feel your fingers. Other things in that level, uh, this is my X-Ped pillow. I love it because it's super thick when I lay on my side. It keeps my head elevated and I don't get that kink in my neck. I should mention that that is an inflatable pillow. Before I get into my ditty bag, this is my Nemo Tensor uh, inflatable sleeping pad, ultra lightweight, it's insulated, it's the long wide version. All right, let's get into, what's, they call it a ditty bag. It's just a quart size Ziploc bag with all the little junk uh, that I'm probably not going to need to access that much, but I have it along um, just in case and I'll probably only access it once a day. Uh, I have uh, extra wet wipes in here. Once I use that first one inside of my fanny pack, I have some 100% DEET uh, mosquito repellent. Usually mosquitoes aren't a problem in uh, Colorado, but just in case, I have a little tube of body glide in case I have chafing. I have a little uh, patch here for patching my air mattress if it uh, develops a hole. I have some allergy tabs on a previous hike uh, I got into the weeds, got itchy. It's nice to have that along uh, just in case you need it. An extra smart water bottle cover just in case you lose one of the other ones. A stick of chapstick, chapstick with Luca tape on the outside. Luca tape is really good for your feet and blisters. I have a uh, block for charging my devices for plugging USB in. Uh, this will be used on my resupplies uh, to recharge my power bank extra set of matches and lighter. I have this toggle, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I use this toggle for hanging my food. This is an extra one just in case I lose the first one. It's titanium, it weighs virtually nothing. Uh, I have some, they're basically like Tums tabs. If I get upset, upset stomach, uh, I can take a couple of those. That's where I will keep my car key and a couple different sizes of little carabiners, just extra. You never know when you're going to need those. Next, oh boy, I hit my headlamp. Uh, this is the dual pocket gadget bag with my headlamp on. Uh, this is a custom printed again from Hilltop Packs. If you ever want some bags 
printed with a photo or your logo or something on it, uh, check them out uh, on the web. This is my Anchor power bank, uh, big enough to last three or four days, and then I power it back up at my resupplies. I know you want attention here. And this is my Nikkor NU25 headlamp. I love it, it's rechargeable, and you can actually, by pressing both the buttons, lock it so it doesn't turn on like I just did in here. Uh, I just didn't do that before this video. So, uh, super bright, super lightweight, super easy to use, and it can be charged uh, using a micro USB cord plugged into the power bank. Uh, this cord will also charge uh, the Garmin, and it'll also charge that Bluetooth speaker. I have a uh, cord for charging my iPhone 12, um, which I'm actually shooting this video with. And I have uh, earbuds, so if I want to watch a movie or watch the video that I shot throughout the day in my tent, I put those in so people don't have to hear it. I have some Advil PM, helps me sleep, helps me when I'm sore, and I also have some prescription medications in there. I will also have some medication. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, it's used for altitude. I did get sick one year from altitude and I've been taking this uh, as a precaution because there's a lot of planning and money in this trip and I don't want to have to stop early again. So that is everything in the third layer. Uh, before I get to the fourth layer and the final layer, I have some REI rain pants in here. Uh, I put them inside because if it starts raining, I'm most likely not going to put on my rain pants. You know, if it's going to be a gusher all day, I might put them on. But really, it's going to be too warm. These are the only pants that I have. I put them on if it's cold. So, you know, the cold isn't going to sneak up on me. I can dig them out at night or in the morning. Uh, also sneaking out here is my sit pad. I put this inside. Now, this is a frameless backpack. And I put this uh, where my backpack is resting against my back. Gives a little structure, gives a little padding, makes it a little bit more comfortable while I'm hiking. All right, the fourth and final layer. I have a Sea to Summit. Uh, it's a light, lightweight, waterproof uh, compression sack. And inside of here, I keep all of my down. So in my down, there are two items in here, if I can get it open. The first one is my top quilt. My top quilt is brand new this year. Uh, I bought it from Hammock Gear. It is a 20 degree top quilt uh, with 950 fill power down. I upgraded, I did have a different a 20 degree top quilt. This one has 950 fill power down. And it is in the wide version, which is good for ground sleeping versus the regular version that's more for in my hammock. I usually sleep in a hammock, but in Colorado, we're going to be most of the time between 10,000 feet and 13,000 feet. And they aren't the trees for hanging a hammock uh, in most places. And the final item here is my Magma 850 uh, down puffy from REI with a hood. Mostly the only time that I'll wear this, uh, I will not wear this hiking. I keep it dry. I wear it to bed. I like pulling the hood up, keeps my head nice and warm. So I think that is everything. I know I'm forgetting something. When I edit this video, if I'm missing something, I'll put it right here. If, if, I, if you think that I'm missing something, to tell you the truth, by the time you see this video, I'm already done with this hike. But you can tell me because, you know, you're probably the smartest guy in the room. Anyway, I am going to be doing trip videos of this trip. Break it up into three shorter videos. And the first one will start a week after this video comes out. If you're interested in seeing that video, please go ahead, hit subscribe, punch the bell notification. They'll tell you when I put out that video. You can also check out Midwest Backpacker on Instagram and Facebook. I take a lot of photos and I post them there. And in Colorado, there's some awesome views 
and I hope to take some really great photos. Anyway, if you see me on the trail, say hi, I'll give you a sticker, and I'm just happy that I can see you out on the trail.